Hello and welcome to this introductory video on how to use a picoscope. The first thing that you've got to do is go onto the Picotech website and then download the software for the picoscope which is suitable for your machine. So simply go on to downloads and then choose the 2000 product series. The picoscope 2104 is the one that you want. And then under software you can find all the recent versions of the software which were released. You can also find manuals and brochures under here. So uh, I'm going to pick the latest version which is the 6.11.10 and click on that and we'll download it. Once you install the software the drivers for the picoscope are also installed. So the next thing that you've got to do before you start the software is connect the picoscope to the computer via the USB cable provided. So now we have our picoscope software up and running. What do we do next? Well, first of all, let's explore the toolbar and understand what some of the icons mean. Up here, you've got channel A, and if you hover over it, it can tell you what it is. Uh, this is the icon that allows you to set the options for channel A. Similar thing for channel B, and then you've got your signal generator over here. So first of all, let's see how we can calibrate our oscilloscope probes. We will do this by connecting a probe to channel A, and then connecting this probe to the output of the signal generator which comes with the picoscope. So the first thing that we need to do is to set the probe to the setting that we want, usually times 10, but you can set it to times 1 as well. And then we have to set the uh, software to the same setting as well. So we click on the channel A icon to change the channel settings. And since I've got my probe set to times 10, I'm going to set this to times 10 as well. If you don't do this, then you're going to end up with the wrong scale on, on your y-axis. The next thing that I'm going to do, of course, is uh, connect the probe connector to the respective port. And then I'm going to use our signal generator cable, which is one of these cables which has got two crocs on one side and a BNC on the other side. And I'm going to connect this cable to the output port of the signal generator on the picoscope and then I'll simply connect the output of the signal generator given by these two crocs to my probe here. So of course the red one which carries the signal will go onto the uh, signal tip of the probe and then uh, the two grounds will be connected together like so. So this is the arrangement we are feeding a signal from the port of the signal generator of the picoscope into one of the ports of the oscilloscope of the picoscope. So now that we've connected our probe to our signal generator port, what we need to do is turn the signal generator on. So we simply tick this box, signal on, and we get a square wave of 1 kHz and 1 volt amplitude. This is absolutely fine, we can keep it as it is for now, and a square wave is just what we need to calibrate our probe. So let's just close this window. Now you can see we've got this square wave moving all over the place and the reason for this is that we need to set our oscilloscope uh, in the right way to be able to display the waveform correctly. At the moment the channel settings tell us that we've got a 10 times probe and this is correct. Uh, we are capturing the amplitude of the square wave in its entirety as you can see and this is because the amplitude setting at the moment is set to auto. Th this means that the uh, software is auto scaling the y-axis in such a way as to capture the full amplitude of our signal and we can keep that as is. We've also got a coupling to DC which is exactly what we should be getting. The thing that we haven't set yet is the trigger and this is why we're going up and down all the time. So we need to go down here and then uh, we uh, click on this arrow and this gives us a set of options and the one that is easily selected is the auto trigger and this finds a nice point uh, for us to trigger from and hence stabilizes the square wave. The thing is, of course, if we look again at what we've uh, set on the signal generator, we've got a 1 kHz square wave. And we are not displaying a full period for the square wave because the time scale that we've got at the moment is not quite right. So we need to change the time scale. And we can do so by going onto the menu up here which allows us to select uh, the uh, number of seconds or microseconds per division that we want for our waveform. Since we have a 1 kHz waveform, let's set the scale to 500 microseconds per division. 
and then you can see that a reasonable number of uh, periods is displayed on our screen. The next thing that we've got to do is of course calibrate the probe and this is done in a very similar way uh, to the way that you would do this in the lab. So you've got a trimmer tool uh, of this type or you can use one of those that uh, you get in the lab and then you simply um, fiddle with the screw here until you get uh, flat tops and bottoms of for your square wave. You can see I'm moving in the wrong direction now just to show you how far you can go either way but then I can just simply turn things until I get to a point where I get a relatively flat top and bottom. So all I've done is simply put this tool in here and uh, and move the screw in such a way as to obtain the uh, square wave shown on the screen with flat tops and bottoms. So one of my probes now is calibrated, which is great. I can do the same for the other probe. So I will connect my other probe uh, to uh, port B of the oscilloscope. Note that the probes are color coded. You can see this is red and this is yellow and uh, the same happens at the other end of the probe. So this will help you identify which probe you're looking at. It's very useful. So I will disconnect this probe from the signal generator and connect my other probe, my yellow probe, which is connected to channel B, to the signal generator now so that I can calibrate it. So now that this connection is made, all I need to do is go back to my screen. You can see that there is no more uh, signal on channel A. We don't need channel A now because uh, there's nothing connected to it. So I can simply go here to the amplitude bit and switch it off by choosing off. Then I can go on to channel B. What I have to do is of course set the probe to times 10 because this is what my probe is set to at the moment to make sure I get the right amplitude. And then I can simply set the amplitude to auto to turn the channel on. The coupling again is DC and this is fine. Uh, at the moment, of course, again, uh, we don't have a trigger because earlier we were triggering off channel A. Channel A now has been turned off, so the trigger can't find anymore uh, the reference uh, waveform from which it triggers. So we need to go back down to the trigger menu down here, click on the arrow, select auto, and this finds a nice point for us to trigger from and hence stabilize our waveform. Then all we need to do is simply turn this connector around until it displays the screw that we need to uh, do our, a little calibration and then we stick the little tool in and we can simply work our magic until we get a flat top and a flat bottom. And so now we've got our two probes calibrated correctly and uh, we can proceed uh, to carry out any other measurements that we wish to carry out with the uh, oscilloscope.